Welcome there to the QuickBooks University. Uh, thanks for joining me. I'm doing a tutorial here on receiving customer payments. Uh, so this QuickBooks tutorial is one of many that uh, we teach over at the QuickBooks University. Uh, you can come join us over at qbuniversity.org. And uh, this one, we're going to show you how to receive customer payments in QuickBooks and some of the things you might run into and uh, how to handle them. Okay, so we have our QuickBooks file open here. We're using the QuickBooks 2014 uh, Premier Edition desktop version. Okay, and what we want to do, you'll see if you're familiar with the home screen here, you'll see you have in this customers section uh, down here, there's a button for receive payments, okay? Or you can go to the customer drop down menu up here and go to receive payments, okay? Now this, we're, the, the premise of this is if you have created an invoice in QuickBooks already and you've sent that invoice and now you're receiving payment on it, okay? So let's go ahead and go here to receive payments. Okay, so we're gonna first choose our customer and let's say that uh, we're going to, Christy Abercrombie is paying us for her kitchen. Okay, so we see we have an invoice here, outstanding. Now, a couple things, let's say that Christy only paid us $1,000. Say, type in $1,000 and you put in the date you can put in what we're going to say that this is a check and say that it's check one, two, three, four. And you'll see here that it says deposit two and it's defaulting to your checking account here, this Bank of America checking. Okay. Now that's okay. Now the only issue is if you don't deposit this check for a few days, well then uh, you may be overstating your bank account. So you want to be careful. Uh, you can set up QuickBooks to uh, default to deposit to this account here, undeposited funds. And undeposited funds is more or less a holding account until you go to the bank. Okay. Now I always advise clients, put it to the undeposited funds. And then if you go to the bank, say once a week, once a couple days, you know, use this as a holding account so you don't overstate your bank account. Uh, you don't then go in and bounce a check because you think you have more money in the account than you do. Uh, so we'll put it to this undeposited funds. That way I can show you uh, how to make the deposit. Okay, so Christy here paid $1,000 and you'll see when she short pays or when a customer short pays the invoice, um, it's going to automatically check off the invoice and it's going to say down here, leave this as an underpayment or write off the extra amount. Okay. If you leave it as an underpayment, then it's going to leave the remaining balance in your accounts receivable. So she will still owe us $1,144.23. Okay. If you say write, up, write it off, then it's going to take it out of accounts receivable and it's going to, it's going to get rid of that balance. Okay. We'll say leave as an underpayment. Now, we're going to assume here that she pays the full balance, okay? So it takes that box away. We're going to deposit it to undeposited funds, and you'll see here amount due, applied, discounts and credits applied zero. She doesn't have any, and so now we have received payment for Christy Abercrombie, okay? So let's hit save and close. Okay, so we recorded the payment. Now it went to undeposited funds. So now let's say that we are taking her check to the bank and we want to go record that. Okay, so down here, you'll see under the banking section, there's a button record deposits. Okay, so this is when you're physically taking it to the bank and it should pop up and say, hey, you have this in undeposited funds. So we want to check this off, hit OK, and then we want to make sure that it's going to the correct bank account. Let's say we're depositing to Bank of America, and it's going to say receive from, and it's coming from that undeposited funds account, and there's the check. And if you have other checks that weren't 
part of invoices, you can add them here for the deposit. Okay. Now you'll also notice a box down here, cash back goes to. This is if you are, you know, let's say you're the owner and you're keeping a couple hundred dollars for yourself, you can do that. Uh, if you want to put money into petty cash, you can do that. So let's say that uh, we have a petty cash account here. We're going to withhold a hundred dollars. We're going to say hundred dollars withheld for petty cash, cash back amount. So your total deposit slip should say deposit twenty one forty four twenty three less cash of $100 that we're going to put into petty cash. So the deposit total is $2,044 and 23 cents. Okay, so let's hit save and close. And I'll show you here, let's go to the check register, the Bank of America checking. And let's look for the deposit should be right up here. Here it is right here, $2,044.23. And you'll see it says split, and that's because part of it was going to petty cash, $100. All right. Now, if I also take you to the chart of accounts, and I'll just pull up the petty cash register here and just show you that $100 went into petty cash. Okay. And there's our transaction. And again, if you double click on this, it'll take you to the deposit and you can see where we got the $100. Okay, so these are the basics on recording customer payments. Obviously, there can be other situations. Everyone's got unique situations in their business. But uh, these, are the, these are the basics. And this is, these are the, this is one of the steps of the foundation that you need to build in QuickBooks to learn how to use it correctly to help guide your business. And that's what I do every day in my uh, private practice as a CPA is we help clients understand and use QuickBooks to its fullest extent and help guide their business because they can really, really, really use it to take their business to new levels. Okay, and we do the same thing over at the QuickBooks University. We teach you step-by-step step how to use QuickBooks so that you can apply it in your own business and uh, take your business to new levels. So we'd love to have you join us. Lots of great QuickBooks tutorials at the QuickBooks University. Head on over to qbuniversity.org and uh, we look forward to seeing you over there.